Hello and welcome. My name is Armin Simonian, and I'm so excited to be launching my YouTube channel, The Pharmacy Informatics Professor 2020. I've been in the specialty area of pharmacy informatics practice for the past 20 years or so, and I've also been teaching formally in pharmacy school, a course in pharmacy informatics, and also topics in health information technology for the past six years. Recently, I've also given some presentations, a webinar, and a podcast talking about pharmacy informatics education. And after these presentations, I did receive some inquiries from students, pharmacy students from across the country, who were asking how they could obtain basic education in the topics of pharmacy informatics if they're at a pharmacy school that doesn't offer a course in pharmacy informatics. So, I had been thinking about launching this channel for a long time, and I think the time has come. So let's get started. I'd like to jump into a presentation that I put together for uh, today's discussion. And um, I'll just go through some information, and we'll see if this is helpful for you. So the course that I'm going to teach through this channel is Pharmacy Informatics 101. I'll be putting together some very short videos that will introduce the basic concepts of pharmacy informatics and hopefully help you during your education. If you are a student in pharmacy school or a recent grad, somebody preparing for the NAPLEX exam for licensure in the area of pharmacy practice, then you should be looking at the NABP website, the National Association of Boards of Pharmacy, so they are the ones that administer the NAPLEX exam. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and jump to their website and let's take a look at what it looks like. So here we have different areas that they cover. So I'm going to jump to the NAPLEX screen and you'll see here there's a lot of good information about applying for the NAPLEX. And then if we scroll down, we find the competency statements. So um, this was another reason why I decided that it was a good time to launch this channel, because if you look at the competencies uh, prior to 2021, so starting in January, they're gonna have some new competencies. But if you were taking the exam this year in 2020, then those are uh, different competency statements. So. Let's look at what's in the new competencies for 2021 for the NAPLEX. And you'll see here that NABP tells you how much of the test is going to be on each one of these areas. There are six areas, 18% in the area one, obtaining, interpreting, or assessing data, medical or patient information, and then you see here area two, 14%, area three, one third of the test is on area three, and then 14% area four, 11% area five. And at the way bottom of the screen, you'll see pharmacy informatics listed as one of the topics that's going to be tested on, on the NAPLEX. And yes, it is a small portion, but I was really excited to see that pharmacy informatics is now um, an official topic being tested upon within the NAPLEX. So this gives me a lot of motivation now for providing this type of education for our pharmacy students across the country. So getting back to the presentation, uh, we have ACPE. This is the Accreditation Council for pharmacy education, and they have standards. These are the things that every pharmacy school has to teach. And within those standards, they have uh, health informatics. And this is their statement on health informatics and what needs to be taught in pharmacy school. Now, they do not mandate that there be a separate, dedicated, required course for pharmacy informatics. You can weave these topics into the other curricula for uh, pharmacy school, uh, but you know, in my opinion, I think it's really important to have a separate course in pharmacy informatics. So this is the uh, ACPE statement 
This is the standard that was last published. And then um, what they do is they have guidance documents that tell the schools of pharmacy um, how to implement that standard. So they talk about the types of things that should be taught in pharmacy school related to pharmacy informatics. And you see here, we start to get into the topics of automated dispensing cabinets, computerized prescriber order entry, barcode med administration, uh, programmable infusion devices, sometimes called smart pumps and robotics. That is mainly for the uh, acute care setting. And then they also talk about the community and ambulatory care uh, pharmacy setting. And here they talk about a lot of the similar things, robotics and um, computers, the use of computers in pharmacy practice, technology, and always focusing on electronic health records. So I went back and did some research and there have been some surveys done on how much we're teaching pharmacy informatics in pharmacy school. And way back in 2005, when pharmacy informatics was first being recognized as an area of practice within pharmacy, um, there was a survey of 73 schools. Obviously, there were a lot fewer schools back then. And 24%, uh, 24 schools, sorry, 33% included a pharmacy informatics course. Okay, so then we jump ahead to 2008, and we see that now of 89 pharmacy schools that they surveyed, uh, 25 or 28% acknowledge provision of pharmacy informatics courses in their syllabi. And then finally, this survey in 2018 shows that things haven't really changed over the past 10 years. And if you look at the numbers, now we have quite a few more schools of pharmacy across the country. So they went online, they found 132 pharmacy school curricula. And of those 47 schools or 36% included informatics course, but sometimes that was an elective course. So of the ones that had a required course, it was only 30 schools out of 132. This was just a couple of years ago. So less than one fourth of the schools online uh, reported that they had a required pharmacy informatics course. Let's do a little pop survey to see what your opinion is about this topic. Most of what we do in pharmacy practice is done on a computer. Do you strongly agree, agree? Are you neutral? Do you disagree with what I'm saying? Or do you strongly disagree? I hope you strongly agree because way back when, when I graduated, these were the tools of the trade. We had counting trays. We had everything on paper. We typed prescription labels on a typewriter and in the hospital. We had a unit dose card exchange and our profiles were all on, on paper. Things have changed now. When you graduate or if you've graduated and actually uh, worked um, as a graduate pharmacist or an intern, getting ready for licensure, or even if you're licensed working as a pharmacy, as soon as you start working, you are exposed to a lot of technologies that you are supposed to know how to use. These are the tools of the trade now. We have electronic health records, computerized provider order entry in the hospital or acute care setting, and the equivalent is e-prescribing now in the community or retail setting. We have clinical decision support on our computer systems, automated dispensing cabinets that help us dispense medications to nursing for administration in the acute care setting. We have smart infusion pumps for infusing IVs, barcode medication administration at the bedside, uh, med medication inventory control systems, robotics, robots that can make IVs for us, and then also robots that can unit dose medications for us. So we have a lot of technologies and guess what? Day one, day one, when you start working as a pharmacist, you are going to be exposed to these technologies and expected to know how to use these technologies uh, at a competent level.
So that's why I think the time has come. You know, we really should be teaching a required course in pharmacy informatics in every pharmacy school in the country. But since we're not doing that, I think that it is time for me to put together this course and get it out there. So everybody has access to at least some basic training, some basic education in pharmacy informatics. And in the upcoming sessions for this uh, Pharmacy Informatics 101 course on YouTube, I want to make some short videos that address these topics, defining pharmacy informatics, what is pharmacy informatics, and what does the pharmacy informaticist do in daily practice. And then get into some computer basics, database structure and build. These are concepts that you need to know if you're going to practice as a pharmacy informaticist, but it also gives you a good idea of how electronic health records are put together. So I'm not going to turn you into a computer programmer. I just want you to know some of the computer basics. We'll talk a lot about electronic health records, which we all use now in um, all settings of pharmacy practice. And then electronic prescribing, uh, reviewing prescriptions and medication orders in the acute care setting and documentation. And then our clinical decision support systems where the computer helps us make decisions about therapy and watches out for drug interactions, drug allergies, and drug dosing and other areas where we can apply some intelligence to uh, within the computer so that the computer can help us make decisions. And then um, generally automation across the medication use process. I'll define what the medication use process is and talk about automation, uh, where it has currently been applied and where it might be applied in the future. And then with all this great data that we have, we need to do some good data analytics and reporting, see if we can improve health outcomes by looking at what we're doing and where we can uh, improve medication therapy. All right, and with that, I will say, if you think that this is useful for you and you want to encourage me to go ahead and develop these videos and put them out there, then go ahead and like this video and subscribe to this channel. That will tell me that there's an interest out there and that I should spend my time doing this, that it's a worthwhile endeavor. And I'll thank you for doing that. And with that, I'll say, go ahead and do your likes, do your subscribe. And in the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy. And I will go ahead and work on the next video and put it out there and see if we can get started on teaching pharmacy informatics topics. All right, everyone, take care.